7, Sacramento Police. Unit 99, are you in the clear? Unit 99 to KMA 907. Unit 99, Sergeant Meredith, 909, in service, on the air. This is Sergeant Dan Meredith of Unit 99 at Headquarters, Police Department, City of Sacramento, California. My detail is to ride in Unit 99, our tape recorder equipped radio car, and to respond whenever the dispatcher transmits a signal to one of our other units on duty somewhere in the city. At the scene, we make the recordings which we provide for this program. Now, to tell you more about Unit 99, here is our chief, James V. Hicks, Sacramento Police. The job of a police officer is your protection. The cases you hear on this radio program are real cases. The police are real, the victims and the criminals are real. We are glad to provide Unit 99 and Sergeant Meredith so that you will hear how the police of a great city work night and day for your protection. Make no mistake about it. There are no actors on these tapes. They are real from beginning to end. Now to Unit 99 and Sergeant Dan Meredith on duty. Unit 4, 910 at 2611, 28th Street 4. Came in on a 7. A 910, a prowler call, Unit 4 got it. Let's cover in with him. That's out near the uh, Oak Park District. For the units here, let's get out. Let's go around the back. The unit must be around the back. There's somebody there. No, man. Marty? See anything? Huh? This, Who's this? This lady here's uh, sister who used to own this house and she sold it. Uh -huh. She wants to, she was sleeping here in the backyard. <laughs> What do you sleep back here for? Well, I just don't like down on, uh, down in the little hotels down in there, sir, because at the time you go down through there, some of those old men is hot and go to bed, and they think I'm, you know, and I just prefer hiding out of around here where she used to live, see. Was this house occupied now? No. no it's no. empty now. Oh, I should think you ought to get some other place besides the back. Well, I tell you what now. You can Aren't you married? Well, I have been, but you see, my husband and I separated, and I just feel like I'm just, I don't know. And um, I uh, just uh, got over with a traffic ticket I got in 1952, see, and uh, while I was trying to settle that. You don't have to show us. 12th Avenue, see. Well, I just want to show you to be true. That's why I'm here. And... Um, well, I got a notice I had to move, see. So, for two or three nights, I stayed down there in some of those old hotels, and I don't, roaches and bugs, and me and my folk don't get along at all I've done for them, and uh, general finance, see, I was two notes behind in my car after having all that traffic trouble, and uh, you can call general finance. He went and asked me, well, won't you see? Well, she owed me $90 for keeping her kids back here in January, and she didn't pay me. Well, rather than to get back in trouble and fuss and fight with them, I'd just rather stay here until I can get me a house. See, I'm trying to look. I have this man here now. Well, this isn't a proper place for you to be. I know home. that, but I just thought probably, well, you know, she was on it. She used to own it. And she she was... doesn't own it now, though. No, she doesn't. She's she's bought over here on... Uh, on... Uh, Fourth Avenue, and I just don't want to bother my people, period. And I didn't. Well, you can't uh, come around sleeping backyards where people will complain about you. Oh, I wasn't going to disturb nobody. I well, evidently you have. We got a call on it here. Yeah, when I walked down the, down the uh, sidewalk there. When you're in the backyard here. Well, well. Um, nobody know who you were around here. Oh, well, I'm... They evidently knew that you didn't have any business here. Yeah. She's sleeping in a pile of bricks around. Right? Well, sir, there. I'd rather <laughs> sleep there and be comfy, Bob, at all in You weren't very comfortable there. Well, I was trying to get comfortable. Do you have any place to go now? Well, no more. Went down there on the 3rd or 4th or either. And I just hate to bother my neighbors because I've always... Well, you're bothering the neighbors here. 
If you ever place up town, my suggestion or our suggestions are for you to go up there and not stay here. Up there in the little hotels. Well, you can find places where they don't have roaches and bugs. And my people, we can't get along. We just, we see, I'd rather not be fighting. Well, let's get out of here because okay, these people then. next door might be okay. trying to sleep. Okay. Your tour with Unit 99 tonight will offer something of a cross-section of the activities of a police cruiser, a neighborhood disturbance, a prowler, and an auto accident. In this case, the little old lady who didn't like hotels was persuaded to find accommodation somewhere other than in the backyard she had selected. Unit 8. Unit 8, a Fort 15F at 51st and 15th Avenue. Code 2. Check 8, came in on a 7. Disturbance, family, 5100 block on 15th Avenue. It's right off of Stockton Boulevard. We're not too far away. Let's take it in. Uh, There's a big uh, fight over here. There's a lot of trouble over there. Where is it? Uh, in the backyard. I walked everybody up the neighborhood. How are you? Back here? Yeah. Just hurry up. Where is it? Right in the back Right here. Right through there, Manuel. Help, please. All right, knock it off over there. I right, lay off. Get back. Leave me alone. What are you doing here? Yeah, I got a restraining order. I have over here. What's the matter with you? Oh, listen to him. He's a dumb guy. You know, you see him. Come around the house. I got me. What they done to me? Because she beat me and hit me and everything. Look what he did to me. Come over, look at my son. Look, he knows well, where you, his you son is. You two were ex. Still. Not ex, we're still married, sir. Oh, I come home separated. and that's it. Right. We're still married. This is my wife. Oh, well, that's his car right there, Keep Cliff. your voice down. Keep your voice down. Crying out loud, screaming and everything else. How long have you two been separated? For about a month now. I just had to move away from him. I got a restraining order against him. There is a restraining order? Sure. Yeah, but the nun says, he says, I come see my boy. He, so listen, this is an listen. awful hour for you to be coming around. Yeah, listen. Well, I was over here at 10 o'clock. Wait, just a, just a minute. Just a minute. Listen, oh, just no, a minute. Take it easy. He knows where our boy is. And he tried to tell me at the door. He's hurt. He's hurt. I want you. He's hurt. You've aroused, the whole, you've aroused the whole neighborhood. It's 1.30 in the morning. Sure, I was yes, asleep sir. two blocks down the street. Well, sure. Who was that? I was asleep across street, Sergeant, there. Sure, you're close. Yes. You came over looking for Let's trouble. Let's talk to this other fellow over here. Manuel, what's this about here? <coughs> what you tell us? I'm trying to, just a second. We're yeah. a little winded right now. No tea. You, go ahead with it. You tell us your story now. Okay. Just what's, what's your side of it? Well, just uh, just start talking. You'll be all right. Now you said that uh, they're well, she's trying to get a divorce. divorce from him. Mm -hmm. She has a restraining order on him. I admit her. Uh, I'm a really salesman. I met her. Mm -hmm. So. <sighs> yes, you came over here tonight. Wasn't I met her tonight. We went out. Had a couple of drinks, went down to the barbecue, had dinner. Mm -hmm. I brought her home and was sitting in there and he coming up in the door. Mm -hmm. I decided to go out and get in the car, come around the back door. Mm -hmm. That's when it started. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I got a hold of him. I got up against the fence like he's seen me. Yeah. I tried to hold him there until I told her to call the police. Now, uh, as far as the uh, altercation goes, was he fighting with you or with her? With me. With you. Was she involved in it? Did she become involved She'd in it? She came out hollering. He grabbed a hold of her. Mm -hmm. Did he strike her at any time? I really couldn't tell him this couple. Did he strike you? I don't know, did he? You know, turn the flashlight on. That's it. You're not marked up too much. I noticed she was marked up a little bit. She, yes, she I had think, I think he did hit her. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So when you know I'm dry, I can't even talk. How long have you known her? Well, for a couple, three months, I guess. Mm -hmm. All this happened outside? Yeah, right in the backyard. Mm -hmm. I noticed a lot of people here from the neighborhood. She was yelling, help, please, okay. we're beating up on them. That, What's uh, that? He kept yelling, help, please, we're beating up on them. Two of them were beating up on him. You and the lady were beating up on him. That's what he hollered. 
Here's my restraining order. What's this? This is my restraining order. Restraining order? You That's want to right. check this, Lopez and Les Clark? All right. All that man's done is give me trouble since he's been here. Mm -hmm. In fact, he just got out on bail today from another beating up. You better take care of your mouth. It looks like it's pretty well yeah. cut up a little bit. What's that? I say her boyfriend shouldn't hit her like that. Why, oh, should, why should he hit her? Why he swinging at me, that's the reason. She got in the way and he hit her. Do you wish this man arrested? He said, deep into it now. I don't know if he's ever going to get out or not. Well, this is your problem. It's not no, his problem. He's already done his part. Now, whether you want him arrested or not is up to you. No, it's the second time he's done it. Mm -hmm. Well, do you want him to continue coming over here and beating you no, up? No, sir. No, sir. Did, was he the he one that probably, struck you tonight? Sure, he struck me tonight. Be sure it wasn't the other fellow? No, sir. No, sir. That was him right there. This fellow here? No, sir. It's my husband. Mm -hmm. well, have you been drinking tonight, man? I had a couple of highballs, yeah. Mm -hmm. How long have you known this fellow? About five months. Mm -hmm. How long have you and your husband been separated? Well, officially in about a month. Mm -hmm. And has your husband been continuing to molest you during all that time? Well, yes, that's why I've had the <clears throat> restraining order. I see, I see. And since this restraining order was issued, how many times has he molested you? Oh, Judas, he was around the apartment. He broke in over there where I lived. I had to move out, in fact, on account of him. He wasn't even supposed to know where I lived. How many times uh, can you approximate it? Well, I had the police out four times over one weekend. As I recall now, I was there myself. Yes, you were. I remember the incident now. Well, I think that you've been at fault, ma'am, in not having this thing enforced. You, uh, you have the uh, the right to go to the city city prosecuting attorney and have a and have this man arrested, get a warrant for him. That's what I've got to do. That's now. what I told you the last time we talked. You remember? Yes, mm -hmm. I did. Now you see, you've let this thing go to the point where he feels that you're not going to do anything about it. He's molested you time after time, yeah. and he knows that there is a restraining order. Yeah. And you've done nothing about it. So I think that probably now is the time for you to definitely do something. Because he just won't leave me alone. Well, what, do you, what do you want the police to do tonight? Take him in and lock him up. I brought him to here. You want us to arrest him? We'll have to take you along yeah. to uh, sign, a, sign a, a waiver on it. Are no. you hurt? Do I look the like? pr procedure generally in placing someone under arrest in a case where um, we don't observe the violation is that the arresting citizen, which would in, your ca in this case would be you, will have to sign a waiver so that we can place him under arrest. Then we're acting merely as transportation for him, and, and you are responsible for the arrest. Do you understand that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because the violation of the, uh, the criminal act was committed in your presence, and it's a misdemeanor. So, uh, I guess under the circumstances, we can we can take him down. And, and uh, lock him up now. He could bail out, you know. In, in half an hour's time, he can bail out again. I don't know how many more bails he can put up. He's on the tour, it's got two or three up against him now. Mm -hmm. How many charges has he lodged against him at this time, you know? And for what? Was it all for the same thing? No, it's for other people. He's been beating up all kinds of people. This man was jailed on a citizen's arrest by his wife. The case, however, follows a pattern very familiar to the police. The husband interfering in the life of a wife from whom he has separated. We encounter it frequently and have no explanation for it. Unit 56. 901A at front and J. John. Code 3. Chef 56 came in on a 70. The traffic accident with an injury. Front and J. We're just a block away. Let's check it out. Well, here it is now. We're right on it. In the southwest corner of the intersection, there's a station wagon. Jump 56. Knocked down the uh, street signal. And also into the uh, hydrant. Let's get on out. Somebody's hurt. Inside here. Oh, Kitty, please! That's all right, Joe. He's all right. There's a deep laceration in the forehead. Just lie right there, boy. Oh, Kitty! Hold it right there. Oh, Kitty! 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 Oh, Kitty!
friend of yours. Yes. Why don't you sit in our car over there? Come on, sit in our car. You all right, are you? Are you all right? Yes. Okay, then. You sit in the car here. Stay right there now. Yes, we can. Now, you just don't worry about it. What if he dies? No, he won't. That's all right. He's all right. Where were you coming? Down this way, and I wanted to turn, and I, he didn't tell me to turn, and yeah, I was just out. learning how. You know, you get out. Oh. You got the uh, bandages there, Chatoyan? Yes, we got the bandages. You better cover him up there. Very deep laceration of the forehead, bleeding profusely. What happened? Well, you just had a little bump on the head, boy. You just cut your head a little bit. You're all right. Officers Clark and Chatorian are getting out bandages, preparing to uh, bandage the forehead, and stop the blood as best he can. They put that one on first, and I'll go right around it, too, Henry. Better boy, Henry, right across the forehead. What happened? Yeah. All right. What happened, sir? What's that? What happened? Don't you know what happened, partner? No, he just had a little accident here is all. You just relax now. Uh, is that it's too tight on your head now? Is that okay? Can you feel that? No. No, I can't. Okay. You'll be all right now. Don't worry about it. Tie this one right here, Henry. Right here. Here's the ambulance. Look at how we hit that wall, Dan. Yeah. Yeah, you better bring a stretcher, Bird. He crashed into the uh, concrete building here across the sidewalk. Completely demolished the front end of this station wagon. Hey, uh, That's all right, boy. Don't worry about it. You just cut your head. You just cut your head. You're okay. You just cut your head. Just a little bit. another one there. Let her wipe his face off. You just cut your head a little bit, so don't worry about it. I feel like I'm bleeding over here. What's that? Head, I feel like I'm bleeding up here. No, you're just on well, the just head. Just on the up. forehead, you got a cut. Just a small one. Okay, okay. Wipe his. Uh... Where's That's that dripping off from? his head? Is it? Yeah, no, I think it's nose. He's got a bloody nose, too. Yeah, he probably has a little blood. It's all right. Well, you let's just... get him in there. Uh, yeah. You better get him in there as soon as you can. Now, let, let the officers do it now. Just let them carry you. And a boy. Placing the victim on the uh, gurney. Uh, here's a blanket. You want to throw the blanket over him? Yeah. Yeah. No, just lay still there. I think your head is injured. Just a little bit. You're bleeding from the nose. Lay still. Put your arms back on. The officers are attempting to allay fear here. It's the head injury is quite severe. The officers are talking now with the witness or the driver of the car. She's now getting out of the uh, our unit and coming across to the uh, ambulance. Here, come on over here now. How is your leg? Is it better? Be careful of this box. Uh, he's going to be all right, so don't you worry. Here's your purse. You go with him. Are you going into the ambulance with him? The officer will tell you where to sit. Bert, you're going to count your emergency. Um, emergency. Okay, we'll follow you down. I guess I'll get rid of the car. I have yeah. a <laughs> Officers uh, Clark and Chatoyan are going to clear up the intersection here in the condition. Have the car towed in. Front end, as I say, is completely demolished and damaged the uh, brick building itself, as well as a street sign and also the uh, water hydrant. Let's go on in. He didn't tell me to turn. He didn't tell me. Just turn at the wrong time. No, I didn't even start to turn. I just kept right on going. And we were coming down the street and we were going to go home, but he was, I was trying to learn how to drive and I didn't turn the corner right. Well, you haven't driven before. No. You don't have a driver's license? No. You were driving tonight. 
Now, can you tell me just what happened tonight at that Yes, end? I was driving fine until I... And then we stopped by those truckers, you know, that place. And, and he, he didn't tell me to turn. I didn't know whether he wanted me to keep on going or turn that corner. And, and I asked him, and he, he... I don't know, he just... He got panicky, I guess, and I didn't know. I just kept on going. Mm -hmm. We kept on going. I just put it harder on the gas, I guess. Instead of the brake. Yes. Yeah. You just have a seat there, and the doctor will be in just a moment, have it checked over. Now, let's go into the other room. The doctor's working on the uh, more seriously hurt person in the car. He has very deep laceration of the forehead. They're preparing sutures now for it. He's lost a great deal of blood. He seems to be unconscious at the time. Is he out? No, he's partly conscious. He talks a little bit now and then. Seems to be unconscious now. Mm -hmm. Well, he's lost quite a bit of blood. Is he critical? And, uh, he's, uh, I wouldn't say he's critical from that point of view. Whether he has some deeper head injury or not remains to be seen. We stopped the bleeding. And where's so he? He's temper he had a, uh, his temporal artery was divided there, and he must have bled quite a bit from that. Mm -hmm. He's not in shock right now, or he's not in deep shock. Is he going out the county now? Yes. Victoria, you finished the investigation of this accident. Well, the woman was driving without a license. She will be cited for operating a motor vehicle without a license, and if the owner of the car had knowledge that she didn't have a license, he will be cited for permitting an unlicensed operator to operate his vehicle. An automobile in the hands of an inexperienced driver is a dangerous thing. And the man who let his girlfriend learn to drive in his car almost paid with his life. He was seriously injured, but recovered. Both were charged and fined for violation of the Motor Vehicle Code. This is Unit 99 in Sacramento, California. These on-the-scene tape recordings were provided by the Sacramento Police Department and were made on duty by Sergeant Dan Meredith in Unit 99. Your host is Chief James B. Hicks of the Sacramento Police Department. Unit 99 was directed by Tony Kester and came to you from Sacramento. Unit 99 to KMA 907. Unit 99, 908 coming in, end of tour. Check 99, KMA 907. Unit 99 has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.